Alright, what's up boys? Today we're back on MX Bikes, and as you can see we are here at Arlington. Um, new track in MX Bikes, made by Stone Rider obviously for the Aerial Series, um, which is like the big pro race uh, series in this game. And uh, yeah, so it's a super sick track. It, uh, it, it's pretty rough. Um, I didn't expect it to be this rough, because usually, you know, Arlington in real life is a harder pack track, and I thought he was going to just do the ruts for the East Coast tracks, because it, like he did in Minneapolis. I thought um, because he made the ruts in Minneapolis, it would just be for the East Coast, uh, you know, really soft tracks and lummy tracks and stuff. But uh, surprisingly, he did it for a hard pack track. Um, I mean, Arlington's not like too, too hard pack, but it is pretty hard pack, and I didn't think he would. Obviously, in real life, Arlington got some ruts in some corners, but... Um, I don't know, for some reason I just didn't think he would. So I'm assuming that's what he's going to be doing for every single track now, is making ruts. Um, so, yeah, and that's the reason why I didn't ride the Yamaha this week, is because uh, obviously a lot of you guys asked me to ride the Yamaha, and um, I was deciding between the Yamaha and the Cowie, but I feel like the Yamaha doesn't do too good on the rough tracks and on, on the rutted tracks. I don't know, for some reason I just feel like the Cowie is just better for this type of stuff. Yeah, this track is really cool. Obviously, there's ruts in the corners, like the outside berm there. Um, it's actually just apex that corner that I'm going inside. And then there's also, like, breaking bumps in here. And they don't look that big, but when you're, like, you know, sitting down and you're used to supercross with, you know, the super s smooth tracks, uh, you know, those breaking bumps can actually really unsettle the bike and uh, kind of mess you up a bit. Um, it's not too, too bad. But uh, it, can, it can mess you up if you're not, you know, aware of it. And then, obviously, you got the ruts down the whoops as well, which it is faster this week to go down the rut. Uh, in the whoops because they're lower. Last week it was faster to just take the not take the rut in the whoops um, because the whoops were kind of made uneven last week in the whoops and it was really sketchy going down the uh, down the rut. So uh, yeah, this week it's way faster to go down the uh, down the rut in the whoops because they are so much lower. Um, so yeah, in this one there's a rut on the right and on the left in these whoops. I like the left just because it sets you up better for the corner. And then I cut down on there and avoid those ruts there. I feel like a lot of these ruts just kind of lead you into the tough blocks. Um, I don't know. That's why I kind of like cut down on the one before the finish. Um, I don't know why they, they feel like that, but maybe I'm just tripping. But uh, yeah. And then there's this rut. It's a big one in the pole corner, and it's super important to hit it right so that you can triple in. And this triple in is super important. If you guys watched my last video, you guys know that um, it, it's a really hard triple in, especially when it gets eroded and you're going race pace. But uh, yeah, you, you just gotta you just gotta get into the right angle on it so I like what I like to do for it if you guys are struggling with it is I come here so I come here and then I get a wide entry into the corner and then it's important that you don't lean over too far in that rut that way you don't uh, drag peg and it bogs you down and then I uh, usually it usually it hooks up but um yeah you just got to get a good feel for it and uh, yeah usually hooks up here I like to avoid the ruts too um, like I said um, for some reason this week, I'm just avoiding the ruts. At Minneapolis, I was hitting all the ruts, but here I'm kind of avoiding them. And that's for, in this corner, it's just kind of a co uh, coincidence just because I like to go inside here just so I get a good angle for this dragon's back so I can get a good angle for this 90-degree corner before the over-under bridge. Um, if it wasn't for that, I would be taking the rut on the outside of that corner. But, um, yeah, this, this rut looks really tiny, but you can actually jump into it. And it does actually hold you, so it does save you a bit of time because you can't hook up into it. Overall, though, this track is really, really fun. I think it's really well built. Uh, obviously, a lot, a lot of detail and time has been put into this uh, track, so thank you again, Stone Rider, for everything that you do, man. This is absolutely sick that we get tracks like this every week. Um, super sick. Anyways, this being Arlington, though, obviously Arlington in real life is pretty slippery, and it is really slippery in the game, um, especially when the E-Road kicks in. It's, it's really slippery. Um, I'm riding with E-Road on right now, um, just because I want to get more E-Road practice, because um, I feel like we always ride more with E-Road than without E-Road, so it's better to, to just ride with E-Road, so I'm going to be not hitting like the biggest lines in the world, just because it is a little bit harder with E-Road, but at the end, I will be doing a hot lap if you guys want to stay around for that. Yeah, but I'm sorry to everybody who kind of wanted me to ride the Yamaha. I know I was like really hyping up and really wanted to ride it. And a lot of people were tired of all the Kawasaki's and Hondas on the track. Whoa! As um, yeah, as most of the gate is usually filled up with um, Kawasaki's and Hondas, so a lot of people are tired of that. And uh, I get it, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to ride a Yamaha so bad. But again, I just feel like the Yamaha doesn't gel too well with this track and most rutted tracks. So I'm probably going to be riding this uh, bike next week at. 
Daytona as well, because I'm assuming Daytona is going to be gnarly. I mean, just look at Arlington. This is Arlington, which is generally a pretty smooth and not that rough track. And this is very rough, so imagine what Daytona is going to be like next week. I cannot wait to see what Stone Rider does for it. Uh, it's going to be freaking gnarly, man. I, I cannot wait to, to race Daytona. It's, it's going to be so sick, man. Yeah, but the Cowie is feeling really, really good. I just stiffened up the suspension a little bit. I just did a few clicks here and there on the bump and the rebound. And, uh, yeah, just stiffened that up a little bit. And then, yeah, just a few clicks there. And that's all I did. And then it feels pretty nice. Obviously, I was uh, having a little bit of setup issues with it before. Um, but I think I've kind of figured it all out. Um, people have been asking me for an updated settings video, setup and settings video. So I will be releasing that soon, probably this week. Um, so I'm not going to show the setup now. I'll show you guys in that video, which will be coming sometime this week. See how that berm just kind of leads you into the tough blocks there? It's, um, that's why I don't really take it. That's, I kind of just like to cut down. Whoa, nice. That triple in is tough with the E-Road just because it gets so slippery with this E-Road. Um, that triple in is pretty tough. Anyways, this, this saved me like a second though, is by, just by cutting down here and then getting a good angle for the Dragon's back. I was really struggling in qualifying at first, and then I followed Hemi around in EU, and that's what he did, and that saved me like a whole second. So if you're like wondering where to make up time, it might need to, or you might need to uh, cut down uh, before the Dragon's back and get a good angle. Oh man, that triple in is so tough with the C-Road, man. Shift down a second. It's all the power, nice. Oh yeah, also boys, we are on the road to 2K. Um, we're at 1.3 subscriber or 1.3K subscribers right now, and uh, yeah, we're almost to 2,000. Well, not almost, but we're we're on the road there. So if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. I would truly, truly appreciate it. Um, we've been growing like crazy lately. I, I appreciate all of you guys who have been supporting the channel and who have subbed. It truly means a lot to me. And you guys, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just so happy right now. So thank you guys so much. Like I said, though, with how rough this track is, I cannot wait for Daytona. I mean, if this is the, if this is any type of preview, you know, if, if this is Arlington, a pretty smooth track generally, and I cannot wait for Daytona because it, it is pretty rough, and this is just Arlington. So, whoa, a little front tuck there. That's that's another thing that the Cowie has been struggling with ever since Beta 17 is those little tiny front tucks. So i got to figure out something with that. If you guys have any setup tips, let me know. Um, yeah, let me just try cutting down here and doubling it. But uh, yeah, if this is any type of preview day to Daytona, because uh, I don't know, it, Daytona is just gonna be freaking gnarly because of because of how freaking because this is a, like I said, this is a smooth track, so Daytona is just gonna be gnarly. Also, spoiler alert here: if you guys haven't watched the race here, Indy was absolutely gnarly as well. It it was it was crazy the IRL race. Um, yeah, see, you can jump into that rut. It's uh. It really does hold you. Even though it looks like it doesn't, it, it actually will hold you. Anyways, Indy was absolutely freaking gnarly. Um, there was just ruts everywhere. It was the gnarliest freaking Supercross track I've seen in a very long time. It was just ruts on top of ruts. Uh, just crazy, crazy rough. It, it was insane. So again, if this is Arlington, whoa, uh, what is he gonna do for for Indy? It's gonna be, it's gonna be insane. It's, it's, and this is already pretty tough with how rough it is. I, I, I cannot wait to see what Stone Rider pulls out for that. Honestly, Loki feel bad for Stone Rider just because um, once you start doing these ruts and stuff, people start expecting it from you, and you can't really back out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, going back to Indy though, what the hell, Jet Lawrence? In, in the heat race, he obviously when he went down in the first corner, um, got absolutely cleaned, um, t-boned by some guy I forgot who it was. Went down really hard. Glad he's okay. Um, and then somehow he went from dead last to first in a freaking heat race, which is what like five minutes, right? I'm pretty sure five minutes plus a lap. How in the world did he do that? Like that's insane. I um, I think I heard the announcer say that he was going four seconds a lap quicker every lap. Like, that's that's crazy. I don't care who you are. You have to admit that's absolutely insane. That's got to be, like, top five best rides of all time. But like, five minutes. Imagine coming from dead last to first in five minutes. I mean, obviously, all the competition wasn't there because it was just a heat. But still, I mean, five minutes to go from dead last to first is, is crazy. In the 450 class, though, if I would have told you at the beginning of the season that Justin Barsha would be in second in the points with, what, seven rounds to go, I bet none of you guys would have ever believed me. Like, Jesus, that's crazy. Crazy, Justin Barsha in second. <laughs> Tomac a 49-point lead, I believe. Maybe it's 50. I don't know, but a huge lead. Um, it's it's absolutely nuts. 
it's a shame to see so many guys get hurt um, and uh, kind of ruin the championship, which is kind of how I feel like it happens every year in Supercross, to be honest. Um, Supercross is just a gnarly sport, obviously, and people are going to get hurt, so it's a battle of attrition, as they say. I mean, this truck is pretty fun. It, it's pretty fun, man. I, can, I can't even lie. It, it, it is really, really fun. So if you guys haven't yet, go give it a download. I will leave the track link in the description below. I also have a Discord if you guys want to go check that out, which will also be in the description below as well. Anyways, in F1, though, by the time this video comes out, qualifying would have been yesterday. And, uh, gosh, it was so crazy. This season's just so exciting. I cannot wait to, uh, to watch the race tomorrow, man. It's going to be so, so sick. Anyways, Charles Leclerc got pole position. Um, I, I don't know. For some reason, I really expected Max to. It seemed like the Red Bull kind of had the pace all weekend and, and all day. It seemed like Red Bull kind of was the car to beat. And then out of nowhere in Q3, it just the Ferraris just kind of stepped it up a notch. Um, very surprising. And, uh, it, it, I mean, I'm not complaining. But, yeah, super, 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 super sick. Um, I mean, obviously, Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen have been, you know, rivals since the karting days. So, <laughs> if it ends up being those two fighting for the championship, if you guys thought Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen was bad, just wait until you see Leclerc and Verstappen. It's going to be absolute chaos. Because I feel like Leclerc kind of has, like, the Verstappen mindset and the Verstappen driving style, where, like, he's aggressive and he'll push you off track. He's not going to take, you know, any sort of stuff from you. He will not let you, like, push him around and bully him. And Max Verstappen will do the same thing. He'll push you off track. He'll take your line. He'll won't he won't let you bully you. And um, I think obviously Max is a little bit more aggressive than Charles, but uh, I don't think Charles is going to take any crap from Max, and Max isn't going to take any crap from Charles. And it's going to be some aggressive racing. And it, it, it and if it is those two in the championship fighting for the championship, um, I can almost guarantee you that at some point throughout the season, actually I think multiple times throughout the season, they will. Uh, collide into each other so that will be a very fun championship to watch and honestly Carlos Sainz might take advantage of it and just freaking win this championship just because he stays out of it anyways though I'm going to predict that um, Max Verstappen gets a better jump than Charles Leclerc tomorrow passes him into turn one on the first lap um, Then I think Leclerc stays within three seconds of him throughout the entire race. And at the end of the race, after all the pit stops, I think Leclerc puts in a charge. And uh, I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to say Leclerc wins. I'm going to say Leclerc wins. Um, I think Verstappen's going to take it at the start. I'm going to say pretty sta stagnant in the middle, and then uh, Leclerc takes it at the end in the final closing lap. So that's my prediction for tomorrow. Um, we'll have to see if it's right. Anyways, right now is a great time to be a Supercross fan, and a Motocross fan, and a F1 fan because you get to watch you know, practice on Friday for F1, then you get to watch qualifying and uh, Supercross on Saturday, and then you get to watch again F1, the race on Sunday. So all throughout the weekend, you're getting plenty of racing to fulfill your racing needs. <laughs> so uh, this is the best time of the year for me and uh, all my family who watches it with me. And uh, it's, it's just it's just a great time of the year, man. I, I'm, I'm loving it right now. Anyways, I think I'm going to do some hot laps for you guys now. I'm going to see if I can get a 51, which was my qualifying lap, which was 51.7. Um, I want to do a few hot laps. I can take you guys through the track, give you guys some pointers and some tips. So, uh, yeah, sit back, relax, get your popcorn out, and uh, I guess get your pencil and notepad out as well and take some notes. And, uh, yeah, let me take you guys around a hot lap. Let me reset the track here. It's really rough. I haven't reset it since uh, race day. Well, super laggy. But, uh, yeah, let's get into the hot laps. All right, start lap one here. The left side of this finish is way lower, so I'd like to hit it. Woo! That was sketchy. And then apex this corner. I kind of overjumped that double, but that is okay. And are these braking bumps? Oh, I feel like the braking bumps are a lot smoother without the E-Road. That was kind of weird. I kind of just overjumped that corner.
gosh, finally. Oh my lord, boys, that took me so long. I don't know why. As you can see, it took me over a freaking, like, 50 laps. I don't know. That was... <laughs> I don't know why that took me so long. Oh my gosh, that was infuriating. <laughs> Anyways, there was a decent lap. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a sub. I would truly, truly appreciate it. I really want to get to 2K. Um, yeah. And, and again, thank you guys who have already subbed and supporting the channel. You guys, It means the world to me. And uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a sub, and I will see you guys in the next one.